Sorry, saints of God. I hope that's okay now. You know, the Bible says that we must through many trials enter the kingdom of God. Yeah, so we, we cannot be, we cannot faint easily. We cannot faint easily. Just giving a few people time to load up as I also confirm whether my sound is now okay. Are we okay with the sound now? Or much better? Yeah, we bless the Lord. Okay. You know, um, my technical guys told me that part of how censorship works is that um, they can identify a particular gadget and uh, therefore censor it. So hopefully they open that. Because um, my other phone, if I go on it um, on YouTube, it's completely clear. But if I go on it on Facebook, um, it doesn't allow access. So, um... So I was just talking about uh, the, 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 this is part two. I'll just get somebody to compile it for YouTube uh, um, followers. And thank you so much um, just for tuning in and always for just standing with us also even as we birth revival, you know. It's the year of the Holy Ghost. We bless God. Yeah, so someone wants to be on video. Maybe you can let me know why you want to be on video, dear. And then, unless it's an accident, yeah. Yeah, so, um, I mean, you might have something to say, and I, I don't um, know you for sure, but just let me know in the comments what it is you want to say. But anyway, uh, sometimes it's just touching something. So, remember the part I was telling you about that the Lord caused me to remember the prayers that I prayed in the Catholic Church. And you know, there are things I'm realizing about God day by day. I'm realizing that we will never understand His depth know his complete ways and all that we truly only know in part and with that the lord is really really teaching me humility lest you think that you know everything you know and um so um at this point the lord takes me back to the many hail marys i prayed and i'm not saying that you know that is right obviously because it's a good prayer but not addressed it shouldn't be addressed to a human being and no offense made to the Catholics, please just allow me to give my testimony. So, the Lord took me to the part that says, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Now, the pray for us sinners, we're not supposed to keep saying that we are sinners. Because we are sinners, but if we say we are sinners, we must say saved by grace. If you accuse yourself of being a sinner, you give Satan permission in the courtroom of heaven, okay? So the Lord focused me on the part of now and at the hour of our death and i realized that this issue of love and access is a, a thing that can cost you heaven and love number one you cannot see heaven without love you cannot see heaven without love by the way when i finally got back to the lady i'd been counseling and explained to her what was happening she started saying oh this would have happened when you're talking to me. Now can you imagine how she'd have lived with it? Then the meat was meat that I got at my grandmother's 100th anniversary, but we left for holiday immediately after. And so my grandmother would have felt horrible. She's 100 for God's sake. I mean, how would she have handled that? Then my dad is the one who brought that meat. He, there's no way. Satan would have destroyed so many people in this whole process. And the Lord's mercy, he truly said no. That's not how we go out when we fear the Lord. And so I remember that part of pray for us sinners now under the hour of our death. And the Lord told me, it's important to teach the children of God to pray for their hour of living this world. We don't die. Remember as children of God, we die physically, but our, so because, because you're born again. Let me specify being born again. You've received Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord. 
you walk with him in daily fear of God and at the place that you are leaving this earth because that's the way we transition unless God Jesus comes back for us in a rapture the way we transition unfortunately is through the grave but what goes to the grave is this body because this body cannot enter heaven yeah remember the scripture that says deliver me from this body of sin incidentally that's one of the, the scriptures I was looking at in the night who will deliver me from this body of sin a prayer and a cry that we normally say at the place where you've sought righteousness so much in the presence of the Lord that you groan about any single sin who will deliver me from this wretched body of sin because remember what Paul said the things I want to do are the ones I don't do and the things I don't want to do are the ones I do so we are always wrestling because of this clay daily beating it down and making it subject so that the spirit may reign with Christ and the Lord was just telling me at that point for the sake of eternity and remember it's part of what I ministered in the morning that for the sake of eternity that's why Paul said that the people who cause dissensions who cause divisions who are complaining and always causing drama that the safest way is to have nothing to do with them and the sad thing is when you do that people think that you're judging them people think that you've given up on them people think that they are such a bother I wish they would understand how much we love them I wish they would understand how much we love them and you know, sometimes people say that love is unconditional and that someone should be able to love you while you're doing your process. Brethren, that's not always the case. I have not been loved during my process and I'm not excusing it at all. But I've not been loved during my process. I have been judged heavily during my process by those that I have loved. If you're going to do your process, the least you can do is try to explain to someone and when you can't explain at least even check in even if it's on a weekly basis or twice in a week and say I thank God for you for this and that and the other please continue to pray for me just that imagine we don't even have to know what it is but when you're lashing out and and saying all sorts of things and being very ungrateful and only thinking of the times that someone has wronged you as opposed to the times that somebody has been there for you you're now becoming at the place where it's toxic and I shared about personality types and some personality types can handle that you know cholerics don't care about what people think about them you know I, I watch my husband and I get amazed because it's one of his personality types and my husband cannot be bothered but he knows himself and that's it yeah but for melancholies a lot of times those things are hurtful when you just withdraw and you're acting funny and you're lying some people in and you're not allowing others in it's not it's it's not easy and i think for me today has become my conclusive place even as i share with you it's important to understand your personality type even as the lord grows you but keeping tabs of people who are acting weird and trying to cause dissension could actually lead you to hell and so this morning i, I had shared the title of um, love is a must by their brethren you cannot claim to love god and hate your neighbor that's scripture if you hate your neighbor i was so shocked last night the lady was sharing with you guys about uh, her facebook page and how they ended up trying to put me into a lot of trouble which thankfully the lord fought for me with facebook and you know the malice that was involved there if you haven't watched part a of this message you do need to watch it to, to listen to it at least anyway it's an audio you know one of the things she inbox when an inbox her she told me i hate trump i hate trump her reply said i thought you were born again I was so shocked it's been a long time since I had anybody say I hate somebody a lot of people kind of pretend that they don't yeah so I was pretty shocked you know but what I'm saying is if you die at that place where you're saying I hate so and so or you're going through that thing of I hate so and so oh my friend after my near-death experience today I can tell you you will go to hell and hell has a feeling 
as I was thinking about these people that I've prayed for and that are being so ungrateful and hurtful and even praying against me to a point of saying let her choke on her own meat and that it actually begins to materialize and if you're just joining us don't worry you can replay I, I'm just I was just sharing about a near-death experience as I was going through that moment I realized it's easy to go to hell and it's not about you know um, Reverend Phoebe Muko who's a precious friend um, and someone that I just treasure so much in my life one of the things she always says to me is a woman of God it's not about how we start it's about how we finish how we finish is critical sense of God and you can truly 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 walk in the spirit I just preached a fiery message guys would have thought I went to heaven although I was going to go to heaven but it was such a last minute thing so let us pray for our souls and let us pray that the Lord would help us that at the point of transition because you can imagine if you're transitioning and someone is the one who has just stabbed you the one you loved your husband I got so scared for all the people who have died at the point of being killed by their spouses it's not pretty it's not father forgive them it's not Stephen and it's not Jesus if it happens it's very unlikely I learned today that and you know in the past I've preached this but from theory but today I saw it if you're killed by your spouse stabbing you my friend it's unlikely you're going to go to heaven because at that moment bitterness can enter you I, I, I as a lawyer in training one of the things I've noted is uh, when we're studying crime uh, we look at cases that have passed and you hear people saying the last utterance there's a particular woman who died at Kenyatta National Hospital and if this is your family please forgive me for using this example but it's necessary that I use a live example I won't give the case name but it's public knowledge that's why I can give it but this case really stayed with me as I really thought about it because she was talking about how her husband set her on fire and then she ended up surviving and ended up in KNH and then the husband kept came to see her and he was asking her what happened to you and then in the presence of her family members she said katarewe i think karaja was the name katarewe wajeko and until the one who did this to me does that sound like a, a person who is okay in terms of their soul and then again she repeated someone asked someone came to visit her and all she kept telling her family members who are visiting her and this is what got her finally got the person convicted um, convicted just simply means as in they went they're, they're actually serving time I believe they must be serving time for murder but um, uh, she, she she was so we were studying this in order to understand about things like a dying man's wishes and what can be used as evidence and what cannot be used as evidence eh? she's law of evidence class and she tells her brother oh my brother can you see what so and so has done to me you know such things are used in a, in a court of law you know as evidence and and you can imagine your husband sets you ablaze then comes to visit you with your family members stands next to you and then has the audacity to ask you or maybe your wife because even wives do this and has the audacity to ask you when what happened to you how did you get burnt can you imagine how, you know it would take a very high level of maturity because she died soon after that it would take a very supernatural high level of maturity for you to actually finish well at that point so let us pray for our hour of death by the way you should see you know because i was wearing my night shirt and i was on my knees with my night shirt you should actually see it's just that i of course you know you cannot show such things i can only show my husband and maybe my children because it's on the lower side of my knee after the whole ordeal when i was in bed i was looking at my thigh my left thigh and wondering i have lines a lot of red lines and i was wondering where did these lines come from and when I looked, I realized that I must have been clawing on my, on my thigh because I have long nails trying to breathe. You know those instincts, instincts, the ones that when you're drowning, you try not to breathe, but naturally you have to breathe. And so therefore you end up breathing in water. So I must have been clawing on my, on my thigh because it's full of scratches that were not there before. It's not a joke, saints of God. It's not a joke. When we hear, oh, somebody's died peacefully in their sleep, how do you know they died peacefully in their sleep? Maybe they were choking and then they're trying to call for help and wondering how come their spouse next to them is not helping them and they could die in bitterness at that point of how can I die like this? 
you know this message now i understand why i had to minister it later uh, and, and and release it later love is love is not an option we have to love and sadly sometimes when we love people they think that all we do is use words and for them we are not loving them the way they want to be loved but unfortunately that's something that we have to allow the lord to clarify for us um or even continue to trust the lord anyway to help us uh to grow but love is not a negotiation and sometimes when we talk about love that we love deeply and all that some people get very hurt by that because perhaps the understanding of being loved is that you go to see them perhaps the understanding of being loved is that you call them to pray with them Perhaps the understanding of being loved is that you take to them maybe food or or maybe you pay bills or sometimes maybe the understanding of being loved. Uh, anyway, whatever it is, because to be honest, you know, for me, I think one of the things the Lord has taught me over the last one year is really not to speak ill of people. And the sad thing sometimes, though, is that sometimes, you know, there are people who are very, very excellent at places where... Um, Two people are not getting along that got along and their work and i realized by the way the church has such people saved rabashintaing rabashanto but they are very quick sometimes when the lord has healed a relationship when i finally speak with a person and here's the thing you'll be found out brethren you'll be found out it's not worth it your character will be found out so when someone has nothing to lose and finally the lord has healed and because the person has seen you and they know that truly you are real then the person tells you actually what happened to me is this and that and the other and you get shocked because it's the people who are closest to you that go and cook up that you said something to someone and sometimes i wonder is it speculation do they speculate and then it becomes a rumor but you know when we try to think about why people behave a certain way it becomes difficult but let's work out our salvation and if we do get to the place where we cannot agree as saints of God. By the way, that's the other thing I was looking for in the morning. Uh, scriptures about um, people that have gone separate ways. You know, remember Lot and Abraham. Uh, they had to part ways, you know. So Lot doesn't sound like he went backbiting Abraham. And for sure, it's clear that Abraham did not go backbiting Lot. But also, it doesn't appear that there were people in between them that were trying to separate them, you know, and, and that's the sad thing. But the thing is, though, saints of God, we will stand before God and give our account on the day of judgment for every, every careless utterance and all the things we do. And we are supposed to be peacemakers. We are supposed to be peacemakers. But unfortunately, um, peacemaking can be a bit of a challenge. So let's pray for one another. Let's cover each other in prayer. I have personally, you know, when I got off from that situation, I just said, I can never allow anybody to get me to that place at such a situation or such a time. And by the way, before that incident, me, I wasn't even thinking about that. I'd forgiven. I had no issue. I just, if I was praying for them and saying, well, yeah, God, deception is so bad. Imagine, that's where I was at. But at the moment, I'm seeing a vision of let her choke on her meat because she's always showing off with meat. My goodness. You don't expect some feelings or some things to come in. So may the Lord help us to finish like people like Stephen from the perspective, not of being stoned. <laughs> but should we ever be stoned? Because that's an example. Whatever form of rock it may be that is used, that we will say like Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are saying. Amen. Priscilla, it probably might be your end. It might be your end, dear yeah um you can check oh judy good to see you judy many years i would say your second name but it's been many years dear yeah good to see you i hope the children are well dear and uh shalom to you and blessings um no 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 guys don't feel sorry for me by the way you know the lord helps his servants and he works with his servants the only thing I'm going to ask you is, if this ministry blesses you, pray for me. And not just me, but if a ministry blesses you, pray for that ministry. Because one of the things I've seen is a pattern. The people who choose to come close to me or pray for me and all that are heavily attacked by demons. And attacked in very weird ways until we actually have to, you know, like say, okay, you know, it's okay. 
let's let's just whatever let's just part amicably in this way and then of course in the process people try to do all sorts of things and i bless the lord because ah wait i'm just sharing with you also for yourself but then this message is more for you don't miss the message don't miss the message the message is for you love everyone but know when you need it is safer for your soul to put in place the words of paul and paul by the way the lord has used last year i was really studying the book of, the, 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 the the writings of paul why because paul was attacked by his very own okay so that i can relate with very powerfully at a point when i kept wondering what's wrong with me and you know you're trying to change yourself and you know now you can't even minister because you don't even know what you're doing wrong that's when the lord actually took me to study uh begin studying paul paul's writings because paul was hated by his very own they rejected him he was a jew but the jews hated him and then of course uh the jews that had gotten saved had beef with him they never stopped seeing him as the guy who killed um many of their friends and all that and sometimes it's like that with the body of christ sometimes satan does that and remember what i was telling you about rick joiner yeah so it's important that if a relationship is getting to that place that's why paul just says over and over and i shared more of these scriptures in the first video in the morning before this incident happened to me now i understand why you need to say I might lose my soul in the process and there's a scripture um i'm trying to remember where it is um i can't remember i think it's maybe first corinthians chapter six eh? um that talks about a lot of uh, sexual sin but it also says if your if your brother has sinned you need to go and correct them in love but be careful lest in correcting them you yourself be entangled eh? Someone can just find that scripture, uh, Pastor Terry, I know you must be knowing what I'm talking about, and maybe some of you, but it, there's that, that scripture that, that says that Paul warns. And sometimes by the way, remember even in the morning, we were saying that sometimes you sin because you are trying to rescue someone. We need to remember we are not Jesus. We need to remember we did not die on the cross for Christ, uh, for, for the people of God. And so if as a result, of trying to help somebody and get somebody out of their own sin or out of um, a wilderness they may have gotten into, you find that it is affecting your soul and that you're ending up sinning. It's always better to pull away, okay? And, and, and that's why Paul said that. I kept wondering why Paul would say that. Today I've understood why, because you might lose your own soul in the process of all that. So that is a message and, and and part of what the lord was telling me in the night is whenever you first of all he was telling me kathy you have to learn how to uh god called me catherine really he was just saying my child or my daughter catherine you have to learn how to you know for me i give people access very easily and i think that's why so many of you go to other churches but you're always trying to inbox me and then of course money to Kana. by the way when i was on my holiday i tried to help a girl who she took honored me to can at me on, on on my messages i tried blocking her for some reason she was still able to access and all i was telling her is that you can't be saying god has forsaken you and you're not going to church oh i was insulted for your for your information i ties ask why aren't you reaching out to your pastor hey nearly to can but they i think now I'm, uh, from that day i'm beginning to learn when to engage and when not to engage that thing of correcting people there's a reason why there's order and there's a place where you need to be accountable. So I'm just beginning to learn when someone sends me a message and it's pointing to adultery. I'm learning to just say, please, um, this is a pastoral issue. I think you need to talk to your pastor. Have you talked to your pastor about it? You know, I'm learning to do that because if it's going to be a negative kind of feedback, I've learned that a lot of children of God who are walking in sin are not looking for that. They And they are not used to it. I'm not sure whether churches have changed. Uh, I mean, I've not really had to go to look for pastors and found a line pastors for me the people i work with tell me the truth but it appears that uh, the children of god are being babied a lot and so you'll be insulted hey, nearly to kanwa, nearly to kanwa, by the way so uh, you know so i'm learning that in that process of trying to rescue somebody uh if it's going to cause you your own soul or it's going to cause you to sin the lord has not called, called us to go that far the lord has not called us to go that far 
Yeah. So let's continue to pray with one another. Let's continue to stand in the gap with each other and uh, work out our salvation. A point which is brethren, where, um, you know, when Paul says that uh, pray for me lest after I've preached to you, I myself be disqualified. This, this, these are the times. These are the times. And, and, and I ask you, please pray for me. If this ministry has blessed you. I really thank God for giving because when you give, then we have money to work with because we cannot work without money, obviously, uh, because the gospel does require money, paying rent and all those kind of things. But for me, if you don't have a conviction to give or you don't have anything to even give, for me, I, I prefer someone prays for me. Because a true sincere prayer from the heart where someone commits to be interceding for you will go a longer way than any money they could ever give to a ministry. So that for me is what I covet. Um, and I want to just encourage you, love everyone. Yeah, but be careful with access. And I was just saying earlier that the Lord was saying to me that my daughter, I give people access too quickly. And that leads us to now getting, and I'm very, by the way, when you meet me, uh, a number of you meet me online and I, I, I'm not sure what you see. I guess it's the anointing. I'm a very simple woman and I can be very childlike. I joke and I crack jokes and I enjoy you. If you're married, I'll ask you, uh -huh, are you having sex? Those kind of things. I'll, I'll, I'm that kind of person. And I've realized the children of God don't know how to handle that. So what happens with time is, 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 is resentment begins to creep in and disrespect begins to creep in. And it's true. I've come to learn that it's true that familiarity breeds contempt. And one of the things I've come to learn is to say that... Um, to, 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 I've come to learn something, uh, I think just uh, last year, end of last year, I learned something. The moment that dishonor is extended to a servant of God, the quickest thing to do at that moment is not to rebuke. It's actually to disconnect the access. You must, you must remove the access. And I've gone through that with some servants of God, where I went to high five them. I'm a servant of God myself. But we had gotten close enough and I thought I could high five them and suddenly they withdraw and later the Lord reveals to me that the issue was actually the high fiving. And with time you realize that you have access, but they don't allow you the access you had before. So if it happens with servants of God to servant of God, how much more? How much more with the children of God? And in that way it can save a relationship, but also um, sometimes it may not it cost you the relationship, unfortunately, because they can feel it. I mean, when the access is denied. But normally, it, if the person takes it right, then it protects them. It protects them because sometimes the children of God disrespect the anointing and they don't realize that they end up being led into sin. Remember the sons of Eli, eh? the sons of Eli who messed around with the anointing and all of them ended up being killed. Even with children, you must not allow. And incidentally, by the way, I'm very good at drawing boundaries with my children. This holiday, you were playing, playing with each other so much. And I had to tell two of my children, I'm not your age yet. Yeah, because of something that they said to me. And one did not take it well. But I told her, hey, when I correct you, I am your mother. Just because we are so close and we become such good friends, that don't mean... Uh, so I said the record straight. So access must immediately be cut off. Access must immediately be cut off. The love is maintained, but the access must be cut off. Remember the Bible says that those that Satan will use the most are those of, the, of your own household. And the household refers to the people you allow close. Yeah? The people you allow close. All right? Yeah. So I bless God for the victories. By the way, I'm having a good year, and I give God all the glory and the praise and the honor. Uh, the Lord is uh, fighting for me, and the Lord will fight for us as we continue to move in. Uh, but I needed to minister this message, even if it's just for one person, and I think for a servant of God. Earlier on, I began by saying that sometimes when you don't have somebody to mentor you as a servant of God, you make a lot of mistakes. Like for me, the issue of access, oh, come to my house, ah, you know, uh, this and this and the other is has been, um, you know, uh, or you just laugh and tell somebody, okay, I'm having such a bad day. Children of God are not good at handling those kind of things. So access must really, really be limited. And at this point for me, hi baby. <laughs> at this point, I'm limiting access for me. From last year around the COVID time, the Lord began to teach me to limit my access to my innermost places, to my husband and my children, um, and just focus on them a lot. And a lot of people felt very bad and maybe they think they have done something to me. Um, 
but it's difficult to explain when you keep sending somebody a message and letting them know that you love them even though you know you don't have the same access with the person uh, because you are focusing so boundaries yes as as Ephraim says boundaries are very important and I think for me I'm now starting to learn that it's better to effect the boundaries from the beginning and now I understand why older servants of God even when we younger servants of God meet them they are normally very very it normally comes across as cold and then when you get to know them a bit more they are not cold anymore so I guess they are they're guarding they are guarding that place and it's important that we do that and excuse me allow access only according to where people have a right to go even Jesus himself there are places he went alone there are places he went with everybody there are places he went only with the 12 there are places he went only with three and there are places you find that he only went with John the beloved yeah but there are also places where he only went alone so uh, this year it's part of the wisdom and I did share this I think in the last message for 2021 it's part of what we're going to have to learn because part of what I realized is that I was teaching love so much last year and I wasn't teaching boundaries and uh, I think we've tried to teach honor quite a bit but I've realized that when people become your friends and I guess you keep telling them ah don't call me apostle of course they'll still call you apostle but what you're doing in that process is that you're actually lowering the anointing and they think that you are now at the same level because you're BFFs but you're not um, you're not I mean uh, and I think it's one of the things even my own family members uh, in terms of the Kageni family are beginning to learn they're starting to learn that there's a call of God on my life but you see it came with uh, in terms of how to treat me or to speak to me I've had to teach that and it's important that we teach that that no matter um, the places we are with with each other because I mean I call I was talking with Pastor Terry a little bit earlier I refer to her as woman of God I was laughing with Pastor Margaret much earlier today and just laughing because she sent me a message when I was at the Mara telling me, you, the way you love me, you must have eaten all the antelopes. I laughed my head off. It was so hilarious. So I called her in the morning and we were just laughing very briefly as we were saying, let's pray with each other and stand for the gap for one another and just touching base prophetically. What is the Lord saying so that we are also on the same platform and the right platform that the Lord is saying? It's very important to have those kind of people surrounding you. But we call each other. I do not call Pastor Margaret by her name. I call her woman of God, I call her um, apostle, I may call her pastor, but I never call her by her name. And I never approach her in a light manner. I always remember the anointing on her life. Incidentally, I don't have a single servant of God, including our newest baby who is Pastor Marie, that I just go, marry you, you know, no. I say woman of God, da 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 da, you know, uh, and, and honor the anointing. But unfortunately, it seems a number of children of God don't understand that. And um, perhaps it's something we have to keep on teaching. I hope this message has been listed to you. If it has ministered to you, won't you go ahead to our YouTube page, uh, Apostle Kathy Kageni Uganga, my YouTube page, and subscribe, okay? I want to move more into YouTube because I'm finding some difficulties um, with Facebook as I keep going along. Uh, so I may be moving more to face to YouTube Live, so please go and subscribe. I keep forgetting to do that, Apostle Kathy Kageni Uganga, so subscribe, uh, share, um, you know, and uh, invite people as well. Um, but I think I'm going to ask above all, please pray for me. If um, the Lord is using me to minister to you, pray for me. Pray for me and keep praying for me that I will finish well and that I will, um, you know, after the near-death experience today, I can only say, um, just pray for me that after I have preached myself, I will not be disqualified. It's very easy. It's very easy. God bless you all so much. I love you tenderly. Oh, Caroline, good to see you. Oh my goodness. I know she doesn't even want me to call out her name. Sweetie, I've not called out your second name. Happy New Year, dear. I think today is, is comeback day for all my precious, precious ones. This is a precious woman of God in uh, Dubai. And uh, she was just with us those days in the beginning. Sweet, sweet, sweet girl. Uh, good to see you, Caroline. Karibu sana, sweetie. Good to see you. Yeah, let's, let's touch base and hear where you've been um, to and what you've been up to. Whisper may the Lord comfort your heart, sweetheart. It is well, sweetie. It is well. It is well. You know, we are in training as well. And thank you, Pastor Terry, so much, um, even for always praying for me together with your precious husband and your precious family. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for the many of you who pray for me. I know that today I'm here because of your prayers. I'm here because of your prayers. And for those that, I guess, um, have decided to cooperate with the enemy, I choose to forgive, you know, and um, pray for you. Um, because it's it's not you, it's just the enemy at the end of the day. So may the Lord help us. 
and may the Lord uh, protect us. Steve, thank you as well. You always pray for me. Thank you so much. Uh, together with your dear family, I, I, I honor you and I love you so much as a son and thank you for being a son over the years. Yeah, so I may not uh, name names um, all through, but um, when I do see it pop up and I know for sure because Steve was just praying for me the other day when I was on vacation, um, and then I'm able to just say something. At least we just spoke the other day. God bless you so much and, and thank you so much for allowing our daughters to be friends while also respecting me and, 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 and allowing me to be withdrawn when I need to be withdrawn. God bless you so much, precious uh, woman of God. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you guys. There are some of you I may never know, but if you've been praying for me, I want to say thank you. The Lord gave me a second opportunity today. Well, every more, of course. Oh, sweetheart. And happy, happy birthday. I've really missed you. God bless you so much. And all the generals of Sozo Church of God, I want to just focus on. You know, sometimes you can focus on something outside and forget all the wonderful, wonderful, amazing things the Lord is doing. Sometimes Margaret, of course, healed of diabetes by the Lord and has never forgotten and operating so much honor thank you margaret for always whenever i see you i just remember the lord has given me an anointing diabetes 10 years praise be to jesus such a wonderful reminder if rain last night you know through the night you are sending me beautiful songs of encouragement and i thank you so much for that as well thank you for always praying and for always speaking up as well even when people are trying to say that i prophesied about donald trump becoming president for the second term i mean the nerve Thank you so much for speaking up. God bless you so much. Even, of course, my sweet little girl. God bless you. Amen. Bless you guys. Love you so much. Please let us work out our salvation. And I want to encourage you to take this message and use it for yourself. And use it also to encourage a servant of God and to encourage somebody else as well. So that we can be on guard. Let's be on guard, brethren. Let us be on guard. Let us be alert. All the more. As we see the day approaching, Satan will try to snatch us up. Can you imagine if I was to go to hell, the way I would suffer in that hell? After casting out all those demons and all that, God forbid. Our God is faithful and is kind. God bless you all so much. I love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.